Words aren't just strings of letters that we put together, nor are they just sounds we use to communicate and understand one another. Words are vibration. Words create. Words destroy. Words heal. Words confuse. Words uplift. Words relax. Words generate outcomes deeply. With this realization that our words have serious implications on our lives, we understand that they're not to be taken for granted. Let's look deeply into what this means for you. How can you use your words to create the life you want? How can your words heal, uplift, and create? Let's begin. I'm sure you heard the phrase, your words create reality. It's a popular phrase that says, and sometimes it can sound like a truism or a platitude, but the truth is it rings so true. And in this video, I'm going to break down just how important the words you say to yourself are and the proper way to speak to yourself in a way that's going to bring forth the life you want by changing yourself at a subconscious level. We're going to dive into the power of language, how it affects you on, on a mental level, and how it affects your life on a metaphysical level. Our words shape our reality by shaping our subconscious. Our subconscious mind directs our beliefs, actions, and involuntary behaviors. What we believe is stored in our subconscious and it gets carried out. For example, say you're bad at ice skating, which is me. I'm, I'm not the best ice skater, I'll be honest. <laughs> but listen closely. Let's say you had a bad experience with ice skating. You fell off, you bruised yourself, and it just wasn't a fun experience. Due to that painful experience, the feelings you've experienced ice skating, you tell yourself that you are bad at ice skating. Yeah, you had direct experience of it. Although you had direct experience of being bad at ice skating, it doesn't mean that you can't be a great ice skater. But your words are telling you that you're bad at ice skating. So because of what you are telling yourself and what you're constantly programming into yourself, I'm bad at ice skating, you carry that out. It becomes a belief. And in fact, you start to gain conviction in it. What's going to happen by saying these words to yourself? You won't practice ice skating. Let's say you practice ice skating. What's going to happen is you'll give up pretty easily because you strongly believe that you're bad at it. And you'll also beat yourself up for not being bad at it. And it's not going to be a fun experience overall. And what happens with humans? When we experience pain, we want to get as far away from pain as possible. Humans like to avoid pain more than moving towards pleasure. So the idea of being a great ice skater, that sounds amazing, but it's really painful to get there. So your belief will tell you not to practice and you'll be in line with the idea that you're bad at ice skating. So physically, you don't do it. Mentally, you don't like it. Metaphysically, you're not in the vibration or a match to that being of a great ice skater. Also, in this example, you won't see your potential because you're strongly connected to the story you tell yourself. You say, I am bad at ice skating whatever you put after i am the mind pays close attention to that because it's cre you're creating an identity the words we use have a vibration because of the associations we have with them words are one of the many ways in which we communicate with the subconscious when you say i am bad at ice skating you could have an association with the word bad and you can associate it with failure and then with failure you have a super negative connotation with failing but is failure objectively bad is it objectively good? No, it's our perception of it. So even if you say you're bad at something and your association with it is failure, if person A views failure as something they can bounce back from, as something that's part of the journey, then being bad at ice skating probably won't have as deep an effect on their psyche compared to someone that views failure as very negative when they say bad, and that's person B. So our words have associations that we create meaning from and it influences our subconscious. Now, if you flip it, and believe I'm a great ice skater, now your belief is more positive. Your identity around ice skating begins to change. You begin to practice, you begin to have a growth mindset around it, and you start noticing those small improvements that you wouldn't have noticed if you kept telling yourself that you were bad at ice skating. And then the 3D starts to show you that you're improving, you're getting better, you're becoming great. And now by continually telling yourself that and believing it and feeling it, this is how you become what you say. This is how you start to shift yourself and reality corresponds to that. I'm going to touch more on that later in this video. We're a fragment of God, always one in the universe. The power we hold is our ability to shape reality by setting an intention. And it begins with our words. It's not just our words, but our words and intention starts a chain reaction. And I'm going to get into that in this video where it affects our feelings and our feelings are the big engine that really drives things forward with reality creation and changing ourselves. When we look at how existence was created, the universe, God, nature, whenever, whatever you want to call it, the universe or God split itself into separate parts. 
it created an intention of separateness. This then created more separateness, meaning space and time, division. One object is apart from another. There's space between them. To get from that one object to the second one, there's time. Consciousness perpetually divides itself and interacts with itself. And this creates ripple effects of interaction, division, interaction, division. Instances of unity, but not all of consciousness is uniting. But yet all of consciousness is still one. You're a fragment of consciousness. And part of your creation abilities with this mind you've been gifted to by nature is to set and create intentions using your words. The human mind is absolutely powerful. You can create new realities or outcomes in your life that creates ripple effects of its own. You create many realities in the grander reality, in the grander microcosm, just as God created miniature realities itself. The problem though is we've been raised to have a highly material worldview. And what does this mean? We only look at the 3D. We neglect the metaphysical. We neglect the spiritual level of things. Some of us even neglect the mental side of things. So because of that, when we try to change our life, we'd say to ourselves, I need to go out there and do it. I just need to take action. I need this person to be this way so that I can have what I want. We're always outwardly looking. And a lot of us start to have an outward locus of control. If this person would have done this, I'd be at this stage in my life. I would be moving forward in my life if this person did this, that, and a third. That's where we get into trouble. That's where we're fighting life. That's where we play victim by not understanding what I'm talking about in this video and what I'm going to get deeper into in this video. Believing that action alone is how you make change is limiting. Action does help but it's not the only way. In fact, your intention help, can help your action, but at the same time, your intention itself can change reality without even taking action in some instances. Intention can make changes because it affects your internal state, which is connected to the grander macrocosm. So you're almost co-creating with the universe itself because it's reflecting your internal state back to you like a mirror. And this is how synchronicities happen. You ever go somewhere and you meet someone out of nowhere and you had, you were thinking of, doing a certain thing with your life and this person's like a perfect fit for it. Or you set an intention of dating someone that you really like and are really into and it's a very strong intention. And the next thing you know, you run into them in public and it's at a point where you literally don't even think about it. It just happens. This is the power of intention. Your inner state gets reflected back to you and it starts with our words. Now, this process I'm going to break down is going to really help you whether you're meditating on affirmations or you're actively saying affirmations to yourself. Both methods can work. It just comes down to your emotion and your belief in them. That's why repetition and emotion is a very important part of this process I'm going to break down. So let's get into it. So it first starts with your words, of course, your intention, your affirmation. Words create feelings, which is a powerful part of manifestation. Again, I'm going to get into that later. And how aligned you are with the words you say affects how you feel about the words you say. For example, someone that tells themselves, I am fearless. They have so much evidence of being a coward in their life. When they tell themselves, I am fearless, the body is going to react to that. It's going to have subconscious resistance. It's going to say, no, this isn't the case. The nervous system is going to come about and say, that's not true. It's going to reject it. The subconscious body is going to reject the words that are being said because the person is not in alignment with what they are saying, whether they say it actively or whether they say it passively. So what the person has to do is visualize and feel themselves being fearless. That way the mind and body experiences it in their mind, in their mental realm. It feels real when you have sensations. Now the body can respond and say, oh, okay, we have evidence now that this is true because we visualized it. And now there's less resistance to it. And it's like, this is my identity. I am fearless. So we start with the affirmations and the intention. I just wanted to make a caveat about, you know, alignment when it comes to what we say. Continuing on, you want your affirmation to speak positively. You want the positive version of your intention. For example, instead of, I am not an angry person, you would say, I am a composed person. Speak into existence what you want, not what you don't. It doesn't, the subconscious doesn't understand negatives of, of any kind necessarily. Next, present tense. You want to speak in the now because the now is all we have. The subconscious doesn't have our idea of time. Instead of, I will become a confident person. Say, I am a confident person. It's happening right now. Because the past was just a present moment that happened. The future is a present moment that's going to happen. So all we have is the present moment. When you think of the past and you think of the future, these are just concepts in your mind. They're not 
actually things. It happened, but it was a present moment. The future, it's going to happen, but it's a present moment. And when you think of them, it's always in your mind. You experience them always in your mind. You relive them always in your mind. When you speak in the present tense, you're speaking to your subconscious in actuality, in the now, in a time frame it understands. Next, be specific. The more specific we are, the more it's easier to visualize and the stronger the intention is because you can put attributes to it. You can put colors to it. You can put shapes to it. You can put objects to it. You can put dimensions to it. You can put so much to specificity. So for example, don't say I am fit. Say I have 8% body fat. Specificity is more powerful because it aids in the visualization. Think of me telling you I have a dog. That can be any dog. You can visualize any dog. You can visualize a poodle, a bulldog. I hate bulldogs. <laughs> side, side tangent. You could visualize a mutt. You could visualize a Rottweiler. You could visualize a Doberman. You could visualize a Golden Retriever. But if I tell you I have a Dalmatian, now your brain quickly sees, ah, a Dalmatian. I know what those look like. I know exactly what they look like. They have spots. Etc. It's easier to visualize with specificity and your words should carry specificity with it. So if I'm, for example, trying to manifest having a Dalmatian in the future, I have a Dalmatian. I love my Dalmatian. My Dalmatian enjoys playing with its, its toys and I'm visualizing interacting with my Dalmatian. It's more strong and vivid in my mind doing so compared to if I said a dog, because it's more, it's, if I just say dog, it's going to be fuzzy. What kind of dog? What color is it? How tall is it? How does it act? Because dog breeds behave differently. They care about different things. Here's a quote by David Hanscom. He's a medical professional. He touches on affirmations and he listed a few affirmations and then kind of expounded on them. And I'll get into that. Quote, I can achieve this goal and be happier and more fulfilled. Second affirmation, my body is healthy and strong. I'm learning to move freely again. Here's what he says about them. You will notice that the word I appears in many of these statements. Most are written in the present tense and include an optimistic future. State these generally in the positive as the brain may be confused with a not sentence. Specific brief action words and feeling words are great to include. Short and powerful is great for these phrases. And he just touched on everything I just mentioned. He said specific, don't use negatives. He did add, keep it brief, which I agree. It's just easier to digest when it's brief and shorter. And he did add action words. Wait, what did he mention? He said feeling, a feeling I just mentioned. Your words are the, is what ignites the manifestation process, the reality creation process. But the feeling is the secret. And that's what Neville Gardard said. And I'll get into a Neville Gardard quote soon, but notice how feeling plays a role in this. So let's get into feeling. Here's a quote by Neville Goddard. Quote, ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. No idea can be impressed on the subconscious until it is felt. But once felt, be it good, bad, or indifferent, it must be expressed. Feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, the man who does not control his feeling may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the disciplining of self to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. So he says that we control our feelings not to restrain ourselves, not to hold ourselves back, but to allow us to discipline ourselves, to feel the emotions that help bring our words, our intention forth. Because if we just say, I'm confident, I'm happy, and we don't feel it, the, the nervous system doesn't register that. It doesn't, it doesn't ring true. It's false. It discards it. But when we have the feeling, and visualization helps with the feeling, why? Because it makes it feel more real. The mind and body can't tell the difference between what's experienced in the 3D realm and what's imagined. So because of that, our visualizations, our words as we visualize, create the evidence the mind and body needs to follow suit. Our words are simply the vehicle to produce an emotion and program the subconscious mind. Just as Neville just mentioned, the feeling is a secret. It's funny because people practice negative self-talk all the time. They say negative words, have negative associations with the words. And then they feel negative about it. And then they come across topics like this, where it's about talking to yourself positively and feeling positive emotions. 
And then some people, God help them, they'll call it hocus pocus. Not knowing they're literally practicing this just in the opposite way that's not helping them. It's like punching yourself in the face. If someone tries to tell you to stop punching yourself in the face, and yet you say, that doesn't work, and then you keep doing it. Unfortunately, this is how a lot of people live their lives. So a mini rant there. <laughs> Feel emotions in your body because it creates an impression on the body. When the nervous system reacts so strongly to your intention, it feels more real. The body, the subconscious, assumes that your intention is taking place in the 3D realm. Repetition is also key here. Why is repetition key? Because the more of the positive intention slash words you say, back to back to back to back to back, the more at-bats you have to program your subconscious. Let's say you visualize what you want, you say the intention, you feel it, but the subconscious is resisting. The more you repeat the affirmations and you're giving it evidence, you're feeding it evidence, the more it starts to believe it. And this literally is the 80-20 to this. Repetition, emotion, and then the minor caveats I mentioned about how you use the words. Every change in the physiological state is accompanied by an appropriate change in the mental emotional state, conscious or unconscious, and conversely, every change in the mental emotional state conscious or unconscious is accompanied by an appropriate change in the physiological state. So he's talking about how the mental affects our body and how our body can affect the mental. So our words can affect how the body reacts to it, but our past programming in the body and the subconscious can affect how we receive the words as well, can block it off. It's showing how correspondence is occurring within ourselves. Channel the emotions of the words and embody it. Let's say you say to yourself, I'm an extremely confident person. Perfect. Now, how would an extremely confident person feel day to day? Not just say it or I listen to an audio about being confident for 10 minutes. And then throughout my day, I do the opposite of a confident person. You could be giving your subconscious the opposite of what you're telling yourself. And the truth is, we spend more times away from our affirmations than we do on our affirmations. So it makes sense that in our day, we need to be aware and make sure that our behavior is in correspondence with the affirmations we tell ourselves. And then we have to make sure we do this continually, 21 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, forever even. Just be consistent. Our words down, we have our feeling down, the belief starts to come about. Now the subconscious starts to not question it. And when it doesn't question it, what starts to happen? It believes this is who we are. And now you no longer have resistance. And now reality, which you're connected to, because there's no separateness. Are we fragmented? Yes, but we're still in the grand reality where there's no separateness. Reality starts to correspond with your internal changes. Now your mind and body is on autopilot. It's in alignment. It's doing the thing, whether actively or it comes to you. Synchronicities start to happen or you just begin taking action naturally. It's really cool if you think about it. So you just involuntarily start taking action. There's less procrastination with things. There's less resistance. Just like your subconscious filters blood using your liver, just like it keeps up with your heartbeat, it aids you in your behavioral changes. This is why when people talk about habits, they say do it for 21 days, 30 days, 90 days, etc. Because you're creating that neural connection in your brain of that habit. That way you just do it automatically. There's less resistance, there's less fighting back because the neural connection is created. This is part of the subconscious programming process and your words, you're creating new neural pathways in your brain for that habit. The brain starts to be familiar with, okay, I have the habit of being fearless. I know the skill sets to get fit. I have this, I know this, I know this now. And these are physical changes in the brain, like literally pathways connect like this. <laughs> it's, quote, every time you repeat an affirmation to yourself, you are reinforcing your neural pathways and making them stronger. This is possible because of something called neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to change and adapt in response to new information or experiences. That's a great quote. So we have our words, we have our emotions down, and our belief is instilled. Next is what we'll start to focus on. You begin focusing on things that are relevant to the intention you set in your state of being because it's related to you. <laughs> And with this focus, it allows you to ignore things in the 3D that are literally opposed to your intention. And the truth is this, we all have a selective focus. We don't go through reality extremely objectively where we can focus on every single thing at once and all this stuff. No, we have focuses. So we're naturally biased. I made a video on this. Humans are naturally biased. So if it's true that we're naturally biased, we might as well be naturally biased to the things we want 
and after the things we don't. This is your RAS, reticular activating system. And it's funny because when you focus on what you want, sometimes people call it delusion. But when they focus on what they don't want, they don't call that delusion. Make it make sense. I know some of you may identify as like pessimists or realists and all of that, but a lot of this is just a choice you've made. It's not like you're right in being a pessimist and realist, like, oh, this is the ideal way to, to live life. A lot of, some pessimists are just pessimists because they don't like failing at things. So they just come in with negative attitudes. And some people are quote unquote realists because they just ping off of the physical that they see because it's the best thing they can trust. They haven't really delved into metaphysical implications enough to really understand how their realism is falsehood. Now, with your focus, you start to confirm your reality changing. For example, someone saying, I'm extremely confident, when they're walking, their, their posture begins to change. They start standing upright. They start speaking with more authority. They start flowing better with their words. They start listening to people, but then also giving their inputs. Now they start to notice reality around them changing. What do they notice? They start meeting people similar to them that are also confident, or maybe they meet a partner that isn't as confident, but them as a person compliments their partner perfectly. What else may happen? They may be walking in public, more people paying attention to them, more people looking at them. Why? Because they are becoming that confident person. So now they can confirm from reality, the 3D realm now, because before it was a concept in the mind, in the in the in the mental realm now in the 3d realm people are responding to them and now the person can be like ah there we go i am a confident person that girl smiled at me that guy said i like the way you walk their boss told them they love their presentation they seem so confident so now the conviction starts to build conviction is just hey my human brain is seeing in the 3d realm that this is the case and now it's like definitely but you don't even have to wait for the 3D. You can have conviction just from an intention standpoint. But for many people, it's even stronger when they see it in a 3D realm. So it's, this, is, this is a big step with reality creation. So it's all about confirming it, right? Let's say someone says the intention of, I work at a fulfilling hospital job that pays me well. Friend comes up to them one day saying, hey, um, I have a cousin that works at a hospital and they have an opening, you should apply. Confirmation. They apply. Invited for an interview. Confirmation. Maybe they don't get that job, but they find another job, they apply to that. They get an interview, confirmation. They get a second interview, confirmation. They get hired, perfect. And that second job ends up paying even more than the first one. You can see reality corresponding to our internal attitudes, beliefs, thoughts. Next, hold the intention. You wanna make sure you hold it. You don't wanna get bogged down by opposite things in 3D, because that's gonna mess things up. That's gonna add lack to your to your mindset it's going to add doubt which are hinderers of manifestation which are hinderers to your to the words you said also when you hold your intention please understand this concept please 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 please, please understand this important concept and i mentioned this in my rejection video and i think it, it rang true to a lot of you and i want to mention this in this video understand universal direction Understand that the universe takes the path of least resistance. The universe takes a non-linear path. And here's what I mean. Let's think about my Dalmatian example. I'm visualizing my Dalmatian. I could probably have a linear path. Okay, step A, this is going to happen. Then this is going to happen. Then this is going to happen. Then this is going to happen. That's my linear path to getting my Dalmatian. But the universe has other plans. You hear this quote, tell, tell God your plans and it and god will laugh or something like that i'm paraphrasing but the universe has its own plans whether it's timing or circumstances that brings it forth it may be different from what you've always intended sometimes it's in alignment with how you intended it but sometimes it's not that's why i don't always necessarily even give timelines for things like i'm going to have this by this time what am i doing when i'm doing that i'm adding restriction my ego is coming in my ego is saying, I need this to happen at this time now. Now I'm adding more resistance to the process and that's not good. We don't want to add resistance. We want to flow. So understand the nonlinear and with universal direction, the universe, God can come up with outcomes that are even bigger than what you wanted. Maybe I get three Dalmatians. I don't know. <laughs> this is a joke, but there are instances of this where it's even more than what you thought. My YouTube channel is a great example. 
I've set the intention of getting to 100,000 subscribers at some point, but I got to 100,000 subscribers a lot faster than I thought I would. Now, if my ego came into play and said, I need to get to 100,000 subscribers by this time, this date, at this hour, I would have so much resistance. I would negatively affect it. But when I let go, I upload my videos. I set the intention, let it go. And I'm, and I'm going to touch on detachment. That's the last thing. It becomes more powerful because I allow, the, I allow reality to just create alongside with me. And the last thing is detachment. Detach from what you've said to yourself. Let it go. Say it as you go about your day. Maybe you say it in your mind as you're visualizing, as you're meditating. Maybe you're saying the affirmations. Maybe you're listening to them, right? Say them, feel them, visualize. Perfect. As you go about your day, make sure you're embodying them. But also you want to detach. You want to have a let goingness of it and allow it to happen. Quote, affirmations can help us to develop a more optimistic way of looking at ourselves and our experiences. Optimism is known to be a powerful concept. Chronic physical symptoms are in part about a destructive narrative within us. My patients learn to change this narrative through diagnosis, education, journaling, and affirmation. More hopeful and positive narratives that acknowledge the pain of the past, but offer hope for the future and lead to successful outcomes. It just goes to show you that our words, let's, and this is a medical example, can affect us on a bodily level. People, there's so many instances of people just healing themselves, getting better with affirmations. Now, am I saying in all cases, it's just affirmations that help them? No, right? There are people that went to the hospital, did the surgeries, took the, did those processes. But there are instances where the intention and words aided either completely or aided part of the process of healing. And, this, and there's so many examples of this, it's not even funny. Now, I'm going to wrap up this video with five caveats I want you to keep in mind when it comes to this, because I went over a lot of information and there's a lot for you to meditate on, but here are, here are five caveats I want you to keep in mind. Avoid avoiding your negative feelings. So what we don't want is to feel our negative feelings and then we're like, oh, I need to say positive affirmations to avoid this feeling. No, sit with your negative feelings. Don't push them away. Question them. Process them. That way it doesn't come back to haunt you in the future. So always remember that next don't neglect the practical don't neglect the metaphysical so there are instances where what you, the words you speak to yourself creates a feeling creates beliefs creates outcomes and the outcomes come about like this metaphysically reality just brings it there are instances where hey you're so in alignment that you just do it so don't neglect either right i think there are different camps here when it comes to manifestation I'm like, listen, both happen. Next, don't be dismissive of the circumstances of others. It's easy for us to develop a spiritual ego of some kind where we say, oh, I'm able to bring forth things I want. Why can't this person do it? These people can't do it. Oh my God, duh, duh, duh. all this stuff. So you develop a spiritual ego about it and that's not what you want to do. You have to understand that others have things that happen beyond their control. Traumas, all types of things, limiting beliefs as well that they haven't necessarily worked on too. People have different circumstances. So you don't want to approach everyone's circumstance so like simplistically because there are a lot of levels to, to how they are. Next, brainwaves. When it comes to speaking your affirmation, it can be throughout the day, anytime. But when you're meditating on affirmations, you want to make sure your brainwaves are slower. Alpha, beta brainwaves. Delta brainwaves are powerful too. Delta is for when you're sleeping. Slower brainwaves allow you to absorb what's being said more. There's less conscious control over what's going on. If you're awake, you still want to do the repetitions and the visualization because it helps with combating the subconscious resistance because the, the repetition and visualizations gives the subconscious evidence that, that it is true. Look to stay in, in alpha and theta brainwaves when you're awake and sleeping, of course, is delta brainwaves. And lastly, work on your limiting beliefs, your ideas of being non-worthy and, and potentially low self-esteem and fears of success, self-sabotage, all this stuff needs to be worked on as well in tandem with the words you speak, because when you work on these, they're going to get less in the way when you want to create the life you want.